This week on Live Action News Now. The courts placed their crosshairs on pro-lifers. Meanwhile, if you vandalize a pregnancy center, you'll probably get off scot-free. Is there a double standard at play? Plus, a Chiefs player is not mincing words to the Commander-in-Chief over the issue of life. The second gentleman is in the hot seat after urging men to fight for abortion. And finally, let's talk about sex, baby. Live Action Nation, let's go. Hello and welcome to Live Action News Now. I'm your host, Juan Garcia. And if you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss any updates. Let's say you went into labor, the membranes ruptured, and you delivered before we got to the termination part of the procedure here. You know, then we would do things, we, we, would, we would not help it. After watching that horrifying undercover video from Live Action back in 2022, a few pro-lifers with a passion for life decided to take a trip to Santangelo's Washington DC Surgery Clinic for an old school sit-in protest. Unfortunately, they're now getting sentenced to hard time for Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act, or FACE Act offenses. 30-year-old Lauren Handy sentenced to 57 months, that's over four years. 69-year-old John Henshaw sentenced to 21 months, followed by three additional years of probation. Will Goodman and Herb Garrity each sentenced to 27 months in prison. Iraq war veteran Jonathan Darnell sentenced to 34 or nearly three years in prison, plus three more years of probation and 100 hours of community service. Again, that's a veteran. Gene Marshall sentenced to 24 months and 76 year old Joan Andrews Bell sentenced for 27 months. Paulette Harlow and Heather Adonai are the two remaining activists scheduled to be sentenced later this month. However, a transgender abortion activist who vandalized a pregnancy resource center in Ohio and who was also found guilty of violating FACE Act violations will not, I repeat, not spend any time in prison. Whitney Durant, a biological woman, was sentenced to a mere two years of probation and a $2,000 fine after pleading guilty to intentionally damaging a reproductive health center. She was actually a former client of her choice and acknowledged that she specifically targeted the PRC because they did not commit abortions. How can a pro-abortion vandal face no prison time while pro-lifers face prison time for peacefully demonstrating? Is there a double standard here? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Now this, the gloves are off. Super Bowl champion kicker Harrison Butker straight roasted President Biden in his commencement address at Benedictine College. The Kansas City Chiefs specifically pointed to Biden's quote delusional stance on abortion as a member of the Catholic faith. Oh snap, it just got personal. Our own nation is led by a man who publicly and proudly proclaims his Catholic faith, but at the same time is delusional enough to make the sign of the cross during a pro-abortion rally. We must always speak and act in charity, but never mistake charity for cowardice. Now, the NFL is distancing themselves from the Kansas City kicker by saying his views are not those of the NFL as an organization. So hold up, the NFL protects players accused of rape, domestic violence, assault, and in some cases even murder. And they make no statements about players who divorce their wives or abandon their families or have children out of wedlock repeatedly not a peep. Then they celebrate Pride Month and partner with groups campaigning for the breakdown of the family. Are we all seeing this? Okay, second gentleman Doug Emhoff sat down for an interview with NBC News detailing how he wants men to be more active in advocating for abortion and saying that the killing of preborn children in the womb is a quote, family issue. I mean, we had a right that was literally ripped from the people of this country, not just women. But hold your horses. I'm always a bit skeptical when I hear about a dude that is this sold out for abortion. I have a question. Are pro-choice men usually seeking to prevent damage or are they seeking, quote, damage control? Because abortion rights are pro-choice men's rights. I deserve to be free from any responsibility for some girl I get pregnant. I deserve to enjoy sex without commitment, marriage, or parenthood. It's ridiculous to think that just because I'm the father, I'm expected to be a dad. Now you can find the link to that skit in the description below. But here's the bottom line. There is no need for men to stand up for abortion. Too many guys are already responsible for coercing or forcing their female partners into killing their own preborn children. Instead, real men need to stand up and fight to protect the most innocent and weakest among us, the preborn children they helped create. Moving on, Representative Frederica Wilson from Florida first publicly shared her story of child loss in January of 2023 in front of the House of Representatives. Her heartbreak was obvious, but the truth was obscured. She claimed that approximately 50 years ago, before Roe v. Wade became law, Florida's law prevented her doctor from inducing labor after her child died in her womb late in pregnancy. Recently, she shared the story again as Florida's law protecting preborn babies after a detectable heartbeat about six weeks gestation went into effect. Then at seven months, the baby stopped moving. He was soon pronounced dead. 
right inside of my womb. And the doctor was prohibited by law from inducing labor. But here's the problem. There is no law, nor has there ever been any law in any state of the United States, which prohibits the removal of the child that's already died in the womb. No law would require a woman to carry an already deceased child in her womb for three months. So basically, she was either entirely misled by someone at the time of stillbirth, or she is deliberately misleading others now. Our hearts are broken for what she went through, but the claims being made are just false. Think about it. Does it seem logical that a state which would allow a living child to be killed in the womb to save a mother's life would somehow not allow a stillborn, a deceased, miscarried child to be delivered? The answer is no. And finally, Live Action just launched its new groundbreaking series, The Truth About Sex. When we talk today about the sexual revolution, we usually refer to the radical change in sexual values that took place in the West in the 20th century. But this was not the first sexual revolution and it wasn't even the most radical. In fact, another far more massive sexual revolution occurred nearly 2,000 years earlier when Christianity took root in the first century AD and prompted a complete overhaul of the sexual ethics of the dominant superpower of the day, the Roman Empire. Live Action founder and president Lila Rose reveals how the very first Christian sparked a sexual revolution that transformed the world and asks if the same transformation is still possible today. You can watch the series on all our channels and website at liveactionnews.org. Well, that does it for today's show. I'm Juan Garcia. Thanks for watching Live Action News Now. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and smash that notification button so you don't miss any updates. See you next time.